What's your goal weight? What do you want to get down to? 160 would be a really, really good number. That's 90 pounds. I know. That's a lot of weight. That's going to be about seven pounds a week of weight loss. Yeah. I feel like my legs are going to give out on me. They're not. Let's go. Mind over matter. Justin. Marcy. I can't. That is BS. Let's go. BS. Let's go. Keep going. Justin, I'm going to pass out. I think when Marcy gets upset and starts crying, I think it's just an act. Do you guys remember these shows? It's those shows where they take someone who is morbidly obese, show a bunch of scenes of them in pain doing cardio or boot camp workouts, and have them lose an insane amount of weight in a short period of time. They basically torture these people to get views on their network. I'm not gonna go easy on Marcy just because she hasn't worked out. She really needs to lose a pound every day. That's difficult to do. So Marcy needs to really focus on the end goal. Yeah, that will make her want to exercise long term, make her cry the whole time and feel like she wants to die. I just need a break, I swear. I just I don't mind working out, I just need a break. <laughs> this is not how a first workout should go. A first workout should be welcoming and slow. Then you kick up the intensity later when it's appropriate. Anyway, this is MTV's I Used to Be Fat, which aired on January 5th of 2011. It's a show for teenagers that models ridiculously unsafe weight loss techniques. This is 18-year-old Marcy, who weighs 250 pounds and wants to lose 90 pounds in 13 weeks, which is one pound per day for that time period. Actually, she didn't lose very much weight in the first few days, so it's closer to 90 pounds in 12 weeks. Even worse. But the problem goes beyond Marcy's experience because an audience is watching her, and if they know nothing about weight loss, then this is their model for how healthy dieting and exercise should be. And the target audience is young people, so most of them probably don't know that much about health. Well, let me spoil it for you. All these shows are doing is modeling anorexia as a form of weight loss, because anorexia is the only way to lose 90 pounds in 12 or so weeks. Before going off to college, I definitely just want to change my life. I want to be skinny and healthy and not feel like I have to, to eat every five minutes just to feel like I'm somebody. Well, certainly crash dieting and using anorexia for weight loss is not going to prevent that. Most of the time when people use extreme methods for weight loss, they just end up binge eating the second they get to their target weight and gain all the weight back. They have zero control over their behaviors and what this show really doesn't get into, at least for the audience, is the psychology portion of weight loss. The reality is that a big reason people have trouble losing weight is because they are in denial of the problem. That's why I have an issue with things like fat acceptance. It's mainstreaming denial and that leads to people who are overweight to doing everything but trying to fix the actual problem. Like my self-esteem, like I try to feel confident now because like I try to take care of my hair and I try to take care of my makeup and I try to like be as pretty as I can be now. A lot of obese people will do this. They kind of gaslight themselves by saying, I can be beautiful if I have good hair, painted nails and do a skincare routine. No, lose the weight. I don't care how much makeup you put on. It's not going to have nearly as positive of an effect on your appearance and your health as losing weight will. These kinds of behaviors are just avoidance of doing new things because new things are scary. She doesn't know how to lose weight, but she does know how to do hair and makeup, so that's what she sticks to. Then imagine how little you're going to try when a mainstream movement is telling you that you're healthy and don't have to change anything, when the real answer is that if you want good things, then you need to enter unexplored territory that is scary. With homeschooling, I am alone all of the time. I really don't have that many friends. I do everything by myself. It's really sad how common this situation is. I know this show's over a decade old, but I get messages from people all the time saying that they have no friends. And here we see how this is less of a weight problem for Marcy and more of a fear of doing new things problem, which is the case for the other people I mentioned as well. You get over your fear of learning new information and trying new things, and the weight problem and the loneliness problem will go away. It's not people's genetics that's making them obese. It's their psychology. It's an addiction to food. People become addicted to things when they have psychological problems. And of course, at 18, Marcy is still kind of a child, so other things factor in here. Marcy's parents divorced when she was four years old. Her mom just enables her with food and refuses to set boundaries. How exactly is she getting to the fast food restaurant to get the best stuff she's putting in her mouth? I have to say, I take her every time. I had a feeling that was the case. Yeah. Why, why is that? Why don't you tell her no? I, I try sometimes, but I mean, she's in, she insists. And then I just usually give in, just it's easier to give, give in to her. 
Marcy's mom also states that she lets Marcy eat in her room instead of having her eat with the family. Not interacting with the family is likely why she has poor social skills. Her only friend is someone who lives in a different state. All of these issues are how people get to be that weight. They have a lot of psychological problems that make it so they can't control their emotions or their behaviors very well, and they use food as a coping mechanism. It's kind of like food's my friend. Like, I know that this is going to make me fat, but this is going to make me feel so good. So I'm going to eat it anyways. That being said, the solution that MTV gives to this problem is insane. Like I said, it is literally anorexia. And yes, anorexics commonly work out a lot. To lose one pound a day, you need to have a daily deficit of 3,500 calories. If the average adult uses 2,000 calories a day with regular activity, it means that she also needs to work off an additional 1,500 calories at the gym if we don't include the calories from food that she ate that day, which is a crazy amount of work. Here's Jeff Cavalier from Athlean X talking about how much work that is. We know that calorically, one of the best exercises you can do to burn the most calories on a minute per minute basis is a burpee. So go ahead and demonstrate the burpee. Now Jesse here, doing his burpees, burns about 12 calories per minute. Maybe 11 because of the rate that he's doing them at. But you burn between 12 calories a minute and maybe up to 14 or 15 if you're really, really attacking it. But as you can see here, his effort is starting to wane a little bit. How long could he actually do this for? So even if he's burning 12 calories a minute, how many minutes is he doing this for? Now think of doing that to the point where you're burning 1,500 calories. It takes hours of cardio to do that when you include breaks, which is really just a short-term solution. Cardio is great for the heart and people should do it, but if you're looking for sustained weight loss in the long term, then you really should be lifting weights. The reason for that is because the more muscle you have, the higher your basal metabolic rate gets, which means you burn more calories per day just by existing. But it's hard to tell if Marcy will even get there because her trainer Justin has made her hate exercise. All right, today, Marcy, we're going to do a nice boot camp style workout. All right, I got some special drills planned. We're going to do a little warm up first, loosen up your muscles, get your heart rate going. Then we're going to get busy, all right? Okay. You ready? Let's go. Gee, that looked really enthusiastic. I wonder why she's so happy to exercise. Maybe it's because of this. 30 seconds, then you're going to start again. No hands. Let's go. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> really? You're going to give up? Like, oh, all right, let's go. Get no. All right, go throw up. You better throw up, otherwise uh, we're running. Let's go. She says she can't breathe. Bitch, she wouldn't be able to talk if she couldn't breathe. Off the floor, let's go. Don't make me ask you twice, let's go. Marcy, if you don't get up out of that stall, I'm leaving and you can stay fat. Now we've gone from a trainer who is trying to push Marcy to a trainer who is being flat out abusive. Understand that if you watch this episode, then you'll notice that a lot of it was very obviously scripted or they were told to do certain things for the camera. But again, think about what this says to the audience. It says, if you don't burn yourself out every workout to the point of having to vomit or pass out, then you are weak. This is not how real exercise works at all. It's not even necessary to work that hard to get stronger, and in fact, it can be counterproductive. First off, in order to get gains at the gym, you need to work until failure or close to failure on the particular exercise that you're doing. If it's weightlifting, that means you go until you can't complete a rep anymore, or you stop two to three reps from that, depending on how many reps you're doing for that exercise. Then you take around a two to five minute break before your next set. That's all you need. Of course, for safety, you should not be going to a failure on dangerous exercises like a shoulder press or a back squat. That's a great way to get injured. Bicep curls, however, feel free to take a lot more risk. And speaking of, overtraining like Marcy is doing in the show is a fantastic way to get injured. Working out to the point of almost passing out means that you are working out to the point where you don't have control over your posture and don't have control over your form. Bad posture and bad form are how people get injured. Injuries suck because they can easily delay your progress for over a year if they're bad enough. So do not do the stupid stuff that the trainer Justin is having Marcy do on this show. This is a horrible way to exercise. Second, oftentimes these shows are really trying to push for the weight loss, which means they'll have people exercise for multiple hours a day, seven days a week. This gives the body no time to recover, and if you exercise like this, you'll actually get weaker. You need proper rest periods or you will not get stronger. That means one to two days per week, you should be resting and not working out. It also means that you're getting adequate sleep, preferably seven to eight hours a day. Exercise gains are a mixture of proper dieting, a workout that is difficult enough, proper sleep, and rest days so that your body has time to develop muscle. Oh, and keep in mind that Marcy is eating pretty much nothing while doing all this exercise. Here's a competitive bodybuilder talking about that. Look how much he says it sucks. 
Welcome to like 1.5 weeks out full day of eating. This is where we're down to the wire eating absolutely nothing. I had a great sleep last night. I don't know what happened, but I actually dropped three pounds. I feel pretty exhausted. So breakfast, the real food is not very exciting at all. This is about a 250 calorie breakfast. But I'm gonna put this down because I am absolutely starving right now. That was a bodybuilder named Chris Bumstad and he said he ate about 1,600 calories that day, which is very little for him. Because he has so much muscle, he probably needs at least twice that. He's also working out several times a day, just like Marcy, and look at the description. Disclaimer, don't do this. Here's him even saying to not diet the way he and Marcy are dieting because it's unhealthy, and in his case, it's strictly for competition. That is gonna be a wrap on today's full day of eating. Not super in depth, my brain is not functioning super great, getting tired holding the camera up. But when you look at people and they're like, you look exhausted, and you're like, I feel exhausted. I feel dead inside. And that means I'm getting absolutely shredded. And this is one of the things where this is strict to bodybuilding. I'm trying to win the Olympia. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm not just trying to get in shape. I'm trying to get to like unhealthy, low body fat levels where I'm absolutely peeled, shredded glutes on stage. This isn't something I suggest anyone tries ever because it sucks and it's not healthy. Real weight loss should be a deficit of about three to 500 calories per day. That's enough to lose weight while not draining you to the point where you feel tired all the time or can't do a good workout. Also, if you want to lose weight and gain muscle at the same time, that is possible, especially when you're a beginner. It's called a body recomposition and basically you work out, have a small calorie deficit and eat lots of protein. If you want to learn how to do a body recomp, then watch this video here. But you could not do something like a recomp with the advice that these shows are giving. They have people at like a one to 2,000 plus calorie deficit per day, and they are actively discouraging healthy weight loss. Oh my gosh. That's like a pound? Sucks. Does suck. I mean, it's just a pound, but honey, you're building so much muscle. That means you have to work harder today. I mean, it is kind of disappointing, like it's only one pound since I last weighed, but... What in the hell? This is great. One pound in five days is normal weight loss, and she should be proud of the progress that she's made. Side note, there is something very wrong about what her mom said about muscle. It's a common belief, so I feel like it's worth mentioning. Not only is Marcy eating almost nothing, so she isn't going to build muscle, but it takes like a month to gain one pound of lean mass. So it's not like she gained five pounds of muscle to offset her weight loss. Outside of that, remember, there is an audience watching this and thinking that she failed when she actually succeeded. Do you see the problem with getting your information from TV networks who try to sensationalize everything? There are literally a number of popular shows recommending anorexia as a valid form of weight loss. And if you think they're only encouraging pathology in weight loss shows, then you are sadly mistaken. By the way, they know they're encouraging unhealthy weight loss habits. As I was watching the credits to this show, I noticed a particular name. J.D. Roth was a producer on this show. That makes a lot of sense. For those of you who don't know, J.D. Roth also worked on The Biggest Loser, another show that encourages anorexia. The reason that name caught my attention is because I remember him talking on the Rich Roll podcast about how he pitched The Biggest Loser to NBC. Mm -hmm. I remember when the network bought the show, they said, how much do you think someone can lose? I was like, a good salesman tells them whatever they want to hear. I go, 100 pounds. The guy's like, 100 pounds? Seriously? Absolutely. I didn't even do the math to defy how many weeks of production by 100 pounds to see how much they'd have to lose. Turns out, it's a shitload. As you heard, this has a lot more to do with sales than it does with helping people. He didn't even consider whether the number he told NBC was appropriate. He just told them what they wanted to hear. So sure, he might be helping people lose weight, but it's like helping people in the same way as saying, Hey, you know what's a really good fix for your depression? Drinking lots of alcohol. It's not a real solution, especially for the audience. Here's the best part. J.D. Roth admits that he knows that losing a ton of weight in a short amount of time is not healthy. It's too much. Right. There's no way. So I started calling experts around the country, weight loss experts, doctors, medical institutions. They all gave me the same answer. And like any good salesman, when you don't get the answer you want, you just hang up the phone and call somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I got one to two pounds a week. Click. Call the next one. One to two pounds a week. Click. So then I go back to the president of NBC and I say, kind of in a whispered voice, hey, uh, I know we started, but it turns out I called every expert in America. 
Turns out you can only lose one to two pounds a week. And I'll never forget this moment. We're still friends. The guy leaned forward across the table and he said, it turns out if they lose only one to two pounds a week, you'll never work at this network again. You promised me 100 pounds. It doesn't matter how J.D. Roth packages this. He knows that they are promoting anorexia as a healthy way to lose weight, and he did it not out of care for the people on the show or the audience, but to make money and get viewership for the network. The host of this podcast, Rich Roll, questions him a little on some of the controversies, but ultimately, J.D. and Rich are friends, so he didn't really question that hard, and J.D. takes the salesman approach every time to make it seem like it's not that bad. And sure, 50% of the biggest loser contestants maintaining their weight loss is really good because that's much higher than normal, but that's also probably largely due to the fact that they have a ton of resources at their disposal that regular viewers don't have. So most people are going to say, screw that, it's too hard, or they will shift between anorexia and binge eating, both of which are addictions, because these people don't have the psychological resources to help them maintain a healthy lifestyle. In the end, Marcy does end up losing 90 pounds in 12 or so weeks and hits her target weight. Bam, 160. That's awesome. Oh you did it. Oh That's my awesome. God. I also found this blog post of what was probably sometime after the show was filmed. It looks like she continued to lose weight and got down to something much better looking. I can't find any information on whether or not she was actually able to keep it off, but you can really see the difference, and what frustrates me is that she is a prime example of someone who could have been attractive all those years, but ruined it because she didn't take care of herself. There are all these people out there complaining that they can't find a relationship or can't find a good relationship. If that's something you want, then you need to take care of your appearance. But I just think it's kind of funny and ironic that these same networks that run these shows will then promote or donate to fat acceptance campaigns and talk about how it's impossible to change your weight. Well, thanks for being a part of the reason that people have trouble getting fit. You have spent like two decades creating extremely unrealistic expectations when it comes to healthy habits. The only good behavior they modeled was setting specific goals with weight loss and setting specific life goals. What's your goal weight? What do you want to get down to? I mean, 160 would be a really, really good number. I want to find out more on a personal level. What are some goals that you have for yourself besides losing weight? You know, I see all these people all the time in regular high schools, and they have a big group of friends and stuff. And, like, I don't have that. What's yeah. number two? There's a lot of shops that I would love to shop in, and I can't shop there because they don't make clothes that will fit me. You know, my goal really is just to be able to fit into the clothes that I want to wear. Those sound like solid goals. I cannot tell you how many times when I was in the fitness industry that people asked me for exercise advice and then had no idea what their goals were. And even when they did give me a goal, they would say nonspecific things like, I want to be stronger or I want to be more flexible. Yes, but where do you want to be stronger or where do you want to be more flexible? That information matters because it affects what exercises you do. So Marcy does a good job here by saying, I want to be able to wear these types of clothes, I want more friends, and I want to be 160 pounds. Very specific. There were also two other good scenes where Marcy learns how to cook and says she likes it, but that scene seemed very scripted, so I don't know if that reaction was genuine. And there was this scene where Marcy's mom says everything is my fault, but I can't tell if MTV just told her to say that or not. Ultimately, if you want to lose weight and become fit, the most important quality is patience. By the way, everything else works like that too, and you need to learn how to delay gratification. Massive, instant results are not a real thing. Losing weight takes a lot of time. Getting fit takes a lot of time. It should have taken Marcy around a year to lose the weight that she did on the show, not three months. As for actual exercise gains, it takes a long time for those too. Unless you cheat with steroids, somewhere around 10 pounds of muscle is good gains for one year. But a lot of times what will happen is that people get so obsessed with how much weight is on the bar that they forget to assess that their body has actually adjusted to it. They get their three sets of 8 to 12 in and say, okay, I'm ready to increase my squat weight without paying attention to how hard it was to do those reps. Was your form bad? Did it feel like your knees were going to pop when you did your squats? Were your first couple of reps incredibly difficult? If the answer to those is yes, then maybe wait a week or two before you increase the weight. Weight increases should be slow. Outside of that, it's not super difficult to get stronger and you don't need to do a Chris Heria Chad style workout to get muscles. While that may look very badass, basic lifting is fine. This whole experience is about safety and that's exactly the problem with these biggest loser type shows. A ton of the stuff they do is incredibly unsafe. 
especially the exercise, to which, if you don't have much knowledge in, don't just go to the gym and do whatever. That's dangerous. Study a little first, get a trainer, or go to a class. As for weightlifting, because I haven't talked about it that much on this channel, there are a few good places to go on YouTube for that. My favorite channels are Alan Thrall, Athlean X, and Jeff Nippard. Whoever you choose to learn from, just know that this stuff takes a long time to change. No one becomes healthy in a month. But if you can just focus on small victories like, hey, I lost a pound this week, or hey, I finally added 10 pounds to my deadlift yesterday. If you can do that instead of constantly focusing on when you're going to reach your end goal, then you'll have a much higher chance of success. Anyway, thanks for watching, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.